Hello, and welcome to the SciShow Talk Show, the day on SciShow where we talk to some interesting person about some interesting thing. Today we got Art Woods, Associate Professor over at the University of Montana. You study little things that are not so little anymore. Let's just start out, tell me what, what is it, a sea spider? It is, yeah. So what a sea spider is normally, I've got a vial. Yeah, so that's a vial of ones that we collected in Washington State out of the San Juan Islands. Okay. And, and that's are, the usual size. Are they just like hanging out in like tidal areas or are they under, like on the continental shelf? What's... They're down within sort of scuba diving distance, so okay. within, you know, 100 feet of the, of the surface. And they like to, to be in soft body stuff, hydroids, uh, sea anemones, other things like that, hide, hide away in the algae. Okay. Um, and they, they're hard to they... see. Like, they're like, like vegetarians, they just chew up, chew away on some well, algae? Well, they're kind of carnivores, but they're also scavengers. Okay. And so, you know, they're eating sort of soft-bodied animals that are easy, that, that, that can't run away from them. Okay. And I'm looking at this and it's like uh, a bunch of dust, basically. Yeah, exactly. Like little tiny things. Like we dove for four or five days and couldn't find any. Finally, my grad student, Steve, who has much better eyes than I did, said, you know, there they are. And uh, They've been there the yeah, whole time. They've been there the whole they're time. Just we little. just didn't have the search image. And these are like what kind of... I don't, I don't want to show you what's on the table yet, viewer, because it's exciting. So hopefully we haven't done that yet. Uh, these, and these are, I mean, obviously they're arthropods of some kind, mm -hmm. uh, but they're, what are they? Well, they're, they're technically in the subphylum Chelicerata, so they're, they're more related to things like mites and spiders right. and scorpions right. than they are to things like insects. But... Mm -hmm. You know, they're all arthropods, and so they all have the exoskeletons and the right. jointed legs. And but pretty, you can tell. are they pretty separate from, like, what I would think of as, like, a land, like a mite or a daddy long legs or something? They, they are. They're very separate. Um, they probably shared a common ancestor about mm, 500 million years ago. Okay. And, you know, just, just so one way we like to think about the relationships is that a sea spider is related to a spider in the same way that a seahorse is related to a horse. Okay. It's, it's about that distance of, <laughs> of relationship. So, so. chelicerids, but But separate. distant, yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I feel like a seahorse and a horse are pretty much not in the same Yeah, but they're all vertebrates, right? I guess, so, okay. Yeah, yeah. So they have backbones, so. <laughs> <laughs> I actually could not have told you that a seahorse was a vertebrate, yeah. for sure. They look real weird. I know, they're very strange. Yeah, really <laughs> odd. Okay, they're fish. Yep. Yep. There. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's all it's all better now. You've been studying sea spiders specifically for a while, mm -hmm. and you are studying the fact that these things that you can hardly see in this little vial here become this thing. Yeah, pretty that, amazing. Yeah. That like looking at it, looking at this three D print. To be clear, this is not an actual animal. It looks like an electron micrograph of a mite mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look like this is the thing that actually exists. And when, when I first heard the term sea spider, I just assumed that it was like just a crab. It's mm -hmm. like some kind of like, that's what we call a certain kind of crab. But no, this mm -hmm. is a very different and very weird and very alien looking thing. It is, yeah. And I mean, you see the first traces of them in the fossil record 500 million years ago. The old ones had longer tails and there seems like there's been tails? A, an evolutionary reduction. So that little nub right there is the I abdomen. Thought that that was, I thought that was yeah. like an artifact of the print. Nope, nope. Um, okay. So, and what's really weird about these is they're all leg, right? This is like a, a, a linker in the middle uh -huh. that connects up all the legs. And so almost all of the body is leg. And one of the really weird things is that the organs go down in the legs. So there's gonads in the legs. Their guts go all the way down to the end of, of each leg tip. Where's its butthole? <laughs> the butthole is on that little nub right there. Okay, uh, and so when you say very it's- tiny butt. When you say its guts are in its legs, does yeah. that mean like, like food goes down into the leg and then comes back out the leg? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it goes down in the leg and it gets digested down in there. There's a lot of peristalsis and the stuff can get kind of shuttled back up here and then it's out is eventually. Like, yeah. yeah, those waves that go down the gut. Right, yeah. so like the muscular gut yeah. is pushing food exactly. down. Exactly. And then you're in, a, in the legs, that's where the absorption of the food happens. Well, no one's really studied that, so we don't, we but don't we, know that, it's, but probably. It's guts and yeah, there's, it's that's guts. usually yeah. why you put food into so, more surface area. So here's a crazy thing about their guts and their legs. We discovered that they use their guts to circulate the fluids in their body because they have tiny little hearts in the middle mm -hmm. and the hearts can't do it. They're just too weak. And so they're Something using their guts as a heart, basically, to move stuff around in their bodies. Okay, yeah. sure, sure. 
weird, huh? I mean, yes. That's yeah. Yeah. that's on the list of the weird things. It is a, it is among the weird things. Apparently, also they have gonads in their legs. They do. Yeah. Where is the gonad? Is all, is that all? Is it? There's like a cloaca situation where it's sort of all happening in that well, tail. Well, they part. have little holes in their legs called gonopores, and when they mate. They have to line up their gonopores, and it's you can imagine how crazy complicated mating is with that many legs. Uh, trying to, to get them all lined up. I love the word gonopore. Yeah, so much. <laughs> I mean, it's like somebody was like, "Well, it's a, it's like a pore, but it's for reproduction. Yeah, it's where the sperm and the eggs come out. So the gonopore. So, I yeah. never knew that gonopores were a thing. Is that a thing in other telicerids? Tri- uh, it is. I and mean, there are other marine invertebrates that have gonopores. It's sort of a general word for, you know, the hole that the sperm and the eggs come out. Right. So. But it's in the legs. In these guys it is. Okay. Yeah. Not in everything. <laughs> so <laughs> Crazy, isn't it? Yes. Super crazy. <laughs> and it's sort of maybe a little bit convenient that are there are some giant sea spiders because that would be very difficult to figure out in these tiny things. And they maybe would. they're different. Maybe yeah. they don't have the so same So we do a lot of physiology and biomechanics um, in this project. And it would be impossible to do on these little guys. And so we really have to do it on the big ones. Mm-hmm. And you know, that's part of the question is, how, how can you be giant like that, and what do you have to scale up over mm-hmm. evolutionary time in order to be a big a big thing like that and still walk around and operate? And we've got so. an actual, like, not not a 3D print here as well. Yeah, take that. Oh, out. you're going to take the lid off for Sure. Me. You can hold it. So this one's been preserved in ethanol. This is a, a real Antarctic giant sea spider. And, and also basically a cocktail. Yeah, indeed. Um... Oh, what in the world is that thing? There's like a cucumber there, on it. There's a lot of things, right? So so those are the palps, and they use those to touch their food and position it while they're eating it with the little hole that's on the its, end. That's its, where the food goes Yeah, in. that's the so proboscis is what it's called, and there's a little set of jaws on the end of that. And then the other crazy thing they have, see these ones that have the circles on them? Yeah. Those are called ovigers, and they use those circles to groom themselves, so they'll run, oh. run that down a leg. And this guy didn't do a very good job because you can see that he has all this white stuff on him. Mm-hmm. Those, are, those are bryozoans that are growing on his, his surface, and so he's gradually getting covered by, by stuff. Um, and then the last kind of really weird factoid about these is <laughs> that the males use these to carry around eggs. Well, so that, after they mate, would have guessed by the name. Yeah, the male, the female the gives the eggs to the males, and then it's his responsibility. She's here, like, here, I'm you know, I'm out this. of here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't agree to this, but you have them. You have the ova whatevers. What are they called? Ovagers. Ovagers. Yeah. I mean, the mouth parts are like so otherworldly. The other, the other neat thing is uh, that little stalk right there. Uh-huh. That's the eyes. And they have oh. eyes that look in all directions, and a little brain in there, just right under the sure. eyes. So you gotta have one of those. Yeah, you gotta. Um, okay, so question. Yeah. How did this basically ocean mite become a gigantic? And apparently, this isn't as big as they get. No. Um, so the biggest ones we saw really were a little bit bigger than a dinner plate. And um, they and had, had like when you say like we saw them, how, like how long have we even known these things are around? Well, maybe about a hundred years. So, right. so there are records of these from the very first expeditions to Antarctica. Oh, they would dredge. Oh, so okay. they had a big scoop, basically. They're dredging stuff off the bottom, and there's descriptions from 1905 mm-hmm. of, you know, we saw these, like, giant spiders coming out of the dredge. So we know that there were giant sea spiders there, but there's been almost no work done on them. And that's mm-hmm. one of the amazing things about going to the Antarctic is it's, you know, it's, it's basically discovery science. You're sort of going into this place where no science has been done. Yeah. And uh, you get to do, be the first to do these crazy so things. So are you jumping so, in the water with these guys? Yeah, we, so we scuba dived and collected all of our own samples. Almost everybody on our team was a diver, and that, that's a whole interesting process in and of itself because yeah. you got to get through the ice, and yeah. you know, you're diving around underneath the ice. We get the spiders off the bottom. They're, they're super obvious. Um, you can <laughs> Big ocean spiders, yeah. Put, put them in a bag. They don't, and, like, run away real fast? No, no. <laughs> this is a fast spider, right? I mean, you know, that, that's top speed. <laughs> okay. Um, and so we take them back to McMurdo Station, which is the National Science Foundation mm-hmm. research station that, that's run by the U.S., and we do our work there. Do you know why they get so big? You know, that that's like the $64 million question. And... The answer is no, I don't know, uh, even though we've been studying these things for a while. Mm-hmm. And um, there's about 
10 good ideas for why they get giant. Mm -hmm. And we've studied a few of them. And, you know, we still can't say for certain why it is. We have, we have some, some pretty solid ideas about the physiology and, and what might allow them to get really big. But that's a different question than why. What's question the question than why, right? So what's like shoving them toward that big to end me, of the spectrum? Because to me, this now looks like food. This mm -hmm. looks, ah. But yeah. if I'm, you know, right. a penguin or a seal yeah. or something, like yeah. that looks like food. So one weird thing is we never saw anything predating on these. And I agree with you. Like, they're super slow. They're really obvious. Mm -hmm. Why aren't they getting just scarfed up? And uh, we never saw anything bothering them. Maybe we saw, not but enough food in this We saw a lot of them that had lost legs. So mm -hmm. there's something going on where they, they get damaged to their legs and they... It looks like they can shed a leg if it gets infected with something, mm -hmm. and then they regrow it at subsequent molts. So oh. every time it molts, a wool stub kind of comes out a little further. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you a little bit about uh, what we think is driving or allowing gigantism. Sure. So, so allowing it rather yeah, than driving it. Yeah. So, so one of the major ideas we've been working on is, is what's called the oxygen hypothesis. And that's just like a fancy word, a phrase for saying that in, in really cold polar waters, Meta their metabolic rates are really low because they're so cold. And that means that they're using oxygen really slowly, mm -hmm. right? Oxygen is the fuel that's kind of keeping the metabolism going. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, in cold water, oxygen dissolves really readily. And there's a lot of oxygen in Antarctic water. It's like the most oxygen of any <laughs> ocean water anywhere in the world. So you've got a situation where they're, they're using oxygen very slowly, but there's a lot of it around. Mm -hmm. And we think that that allows them to evolve really large structures, really thick tissues. And it's still not a problem to get oxygen into where right. it's being used. So that's a way of saying right. that, the, that the window is really large into which they can evolve. But it doesn't say, you know, why My did the biggest select. ones get pushed, pushed way up there? Yeah, and to so. me, it says, like, maybe there's something that would be filling this niche in a warmer climate that isn't. Yeah, so that, that's a great idea. And, and that's actually a, a way of um, expressing an ecological hypothesis. So there are very few crabs in Antarctica mm -hmm. for whatever reason. Not even obvious why that should be. Yeah. But maybe these guys have radiated to fill the ecological niche that crabs fill elsewhere mm -hmm. in the world. And it sounds maybe like it has nothing eat, to do with oxygen. It's things. more of an ecological thing. Well, it's, so. it's, it, but it could be both. It could be that it allows it for larger, but also yeah. there's a pressure toward larger. Exactly. Um, and, and, you know, you hear about the sort of like the times in geologic history when there was a lot more oxygen and there were a lot bigger bugs mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it was possible to yeah. get to oxygenate all this tissue. Right. And you're talking about an animal that can't really even move oxygen around its whole body with its tiny heart. It mm -hmm. has to do it with its with peristalsis in its guts. Mm -hmm. So that yeah. does make some sense. Yeah, I agree. Is there anything else that's, that allows these, that has allowed these guys to get bigger? Well, I think the ecological ones are the most interesting. So the, the polar environments are really seasonal. There's, there's a ton of what's called primary production, so photosynthesis, for about two months mm -hmm. in January and February. One possibility is that big size helps you go through long periods of starvation. And, mm. and so it could be that this sort of super highly seasonal, like one pulse of food per year and then 10 months of starvation, that that selects for large body size. That so, makes some sense. Yeah. And you could fill up your big chunky legs yeah. with... Fatten up for a couple of months yeah. and then just hang out and try to minimize how much energy you're using for the rest of the year. It doesn't seem like so, probably they're using that much energy. You know, we measured, so we measured their metabolic rates. Huh. Uh, they're low. How do you but they're measure not, like, the metabolic rates uh -huh. of an of a ocean, like, t freezing cold? Yeah, you put a little mask spider. on them. And, no, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> so they they... Absorb oxygen across you their entire them, surface. Do you, you bring them out and take them to the lab? Yeah. yeah. Okay. First, first step. Get yeah, them to the so, lab. So this is a good example. Are you so, going to draw blood from these guys? No. Is that happen? No. There's okay. no blood drawing. Um, <laughs> okay. So let's, let's say this is a metabolic chamber. So so oh, okay. this guy's alive. Mm -hmm. You could put him in here and put the lid on and seal it tight. And then we have some sensors that can read how much oxygen is in the water mm -hmm. and you can just watch the oxygen level go down and from that you say well that's how much oxygen is using right i guess you could also maybe study that over time without giving them food they Take could them. that's tricky because their lives are so slow that we'd probably have to be down there for years so we would put them in we'd bring them back and put them in what are called seawater tables right. so these are like boxes basically mm. you're pumping fresh seawater in one time and it goes back out into the mcmurdo sound and we wouldn't feed them for a couple of months. And maybe it sounds cruel, but 
they're totally fine it's because their lives are so slow. Which yeah. brings up another question, which is how old did these guys get? And yeah. I would love to know. I have no idea. And there's my only, guess is they could be 50 or 100 years old, yeah. these really giant ones. Uh, so you have a, a podcast yourself. So you're making content mm -hmm. now, uh, Big Biology, it's called. Yeah. And is it about, <clears throat> in general, like, weird organisms that have gotten gigantic for some reason, or is it just about biology? It's just about biology generally. The idea is to talk to leading biologists around the world about big awesome. open questions in biology and you know, pick people that we know are gonna be interesting on air and have provocative things to say about, mm -hmm. about questions that people haven't figured out. Yeah. So it's been super fun so far. We did a really interesting one with uh, Sheila Paddock. She works on the biomechanics of extremely fast movements Mm -hmm. in stomatopods, which are known as mantis shrimps. Yep. And they have this appendage that they can basically move about as fast as anything in the world gets, gets moved, and they <laughs> use it to break open snail shells. So yeah. as she says, it's the fastest thing in the world hitting the slowest thing in the world. <laughs> and there's like a lot of weird biology about that. All right, well, I've heard that we have another invertebrate to meet, uh -oh. to hang out with that's alive and not sitting in a vat of ethanol. Perfect. And I'd like to meet it now. Hey, Jesse, hey. it looks like you brought us a normal spider. Yeah, these well, are these are outrageous normal. spiders. Yeah. Um, those are. Um, she's kind of outrageous. I don't know, her name is Fluffy. <laughs> Come here, Fluffy. So not super related to each other, but not super not related. Yeah, and I mean, the big, the big uh, move to land. Yeah. is a pretty big difference. Looks, you know. looks superficially similar, yeah. Superficially similar. Uh, eight legs, what? How many legs well, do these guys have? Well, it depends. These guys have eight, and this one has 12. Has that, 12. that one's unusual. Most oh, of them okay. have eight. Okay. This is okay. like a weird okay. kind yeah. of freak spider. It's a freak spider. So yeah. like, the arachnid of the... normative. <laughs> <laughs> I like the freak spider. It freaks me out a little bit. A little I mean, bit. Like, it's look just, at it. Like, it looks like a spider, but like too many legs. And, it, and, legs. It, and it plays with my mind. <laughs> That's so, really weird. Yeah. Uh, and I guess Look, it was like, yeah, no, I can handle that. I'll just have more guts and gonads. Yeah, no problem. But how do you, uh, I don't know. It, uh, that's, so, that's so cool. So these guys, they do not have guts and gonads in their legs. <laughs> no, yeah, they got so a giant abdomen too, right? So they can put a bunch of stuff in there. Why is it so yeah. big? What do they yeah. put in there? All their guts. Okay. Yeah, and then they have their heart. There's less a cephalothorax there. So that's one of the differences between insects and um, arachnids is that they have the, the huge heads and, and thorax and all their legs come out of the cephalothorax there and then they have the pieces over their mouth. Mm -hmm. And so these guys have turned into fangs. Mm -hmm. Nice. <laughs> and I actually have this, you can see that you can't, it's hard to see the fangs under. They just like, like look like furry little fingers. Right. But mm -hmm. if, if you, you, oh yeah, look at that. Oh at man, there's shiny. something not great about arachnid mouth parts. Yeah. So do these have chelicera? They're, in the family, they don't really. The I mean, they're in that, that same subphylum, but yeah. they have this very simple mouth. So it's like uh, three triangular pieces that come together on the end of the proboscis. And it's like a little kind of cutting mechanism. And then that proboscis is big because it has a bunch of muscles inside of it. And they use that to kind of crush up the food and then suck it back into the, the gut system. And where is so the no venom, for the mouth? There's no venom, there's no fangs, you know. At the, right at the end of the yeah. It's the, the, Oh, okay, okay. It yeah. comes and goes the same place. Yeah, so totally different way of So these, these little guy. hands here are, they're just legs. They're not Th Those are palps. So they would use those they to feel uh, sort of, yeah, yeah. feel so and she, taste. She also has, um, she has pedipalps. Um, and so... If you count her legs, I have the the kids right. do this, and they're girl like they're like spiders have eight legs, but then they we'll count her nice. legs, and they're like, wait, ten legs. wait a There's minute, ten. Yeah. Um, so these aren't actually considered legs; those are pedipalps, yeah. and she uses those to feel around and help her catch her prey. Um, and then the males they use their pedipalps for reproductive purposes. So they will collect their sperm and hold them into the ends of their pedipalps, mm -hmm. and then when they come and do their little song and dance for the the lady, then. Um, they will real quick try and stick that. They'll use their front legs, hold up her front legs, and use their pedipalps to deposit the sperm as quickly as they can into a little hole in her, in her abdomen there, and then get out of there as fast as she can. Most tarantulas have this fluffy appearance, and people think it's fur or hair, but it's part of their sure. exoskeleton. You call it your decating bristles, and you can see like a, a I don't know, like a drier spot mm -hmm. on top of her abdomen there. It's like a cowlick. Yeah, and so she would use, and she's not missing any in there, but that's where she would uh, kick some of her hairs off of her abdomen to protect herself. Hmm. So if you were, like, if she thought you were trying to eat her, she would 
quiver her abdomen in warning. Hmm. And then she would use her back legs and kind of do a rubbing, like flicking motion with them. Hmm. And she would kick those urticating bristles into the air. And it becomes like this almost fine dust hmm. of needles or like fiberglass. And it goes kind into your nose. Yeah. So bad. Hmm. Like an has, immediate have, reaction. Has she done it to you? She was grouchy with me one day. I didn't know she was about to molt. Mm. And I was just holding her. And she's like, you know, you're making me, you're, you're, you're making you're, me mad. Come on now, leave me alone. And um, she didn't do any abdomen quivering. She just kind of went to the second stage and she didn't flick them at me or kick them at me, but she just nonchalantly put her back leg up onto her abdomen. It was like, rub, rub, just Like rub, a little warning. Rub. And I'm like, what do you do? Do you have an itch? I'm like, oh no, here comes the cloud. And it was like, I could see the sun shining past her. And so I could mm. see this cloud huh. coming oh. towards me. I'm like, putting her away. Yeah. Um, and I got some up my wrist and some on my neck and then some of my arm there. I didn't get it in my face. Was it kind of a face. rash for a little while? Almost immediate reaction. Wow. Wow. Itching, burning, and it lasted two weeks. Whoa. So if I got that in my eye, that would yeah. be awful. That's, that's super really weird bad. to think that like the thing you need to worry about isn't the giant fangs. Right. I mean, you probably worry about the it's, giant it's fangs. The it's the tiny. On the back of the head. Yeah, it's it's this slight little... Lower back here. <laughs> So these guys, Can yeah. I hold her? Would you, sure, is it possible? Sure, sure. Um, so she does detect uh, temperature changes. So okay. go ahead and put your hands out. Right. Um, and she might, she'll be all right. I've got kind of cold hands, so she may not like that. No. Can and when she walks more? on, you you can feel she has these little hooks on her feet. Mm -hmm. There you go, fluffy. Yeah. A lot of insects have those kind of like little yeah. crochet hooks or something. Yeah, two little toes. It yeah. looks like little furry toes. They're kind of cute, actually. She isn't a great climber. She doesn't like to climb. She's fairly large, and um, she likes to stay on the ground. Mm -hmm. And so they would find a little crevice somewhere and line their their little cave with silk strands. Their their webbing, and then they would put like tendrils out in front to try and catch the mm. the prey. Her little doorbells ringing, so a little cricket would come by and it'd touch that, and she'd run out there and she'd inject them. Mm. Wait for a little bit. She does not spin them up in her little silk web, but um, she would just go ahead and start eating them right there. Mm. Just injects and just like, all right, cricket smoothie. Yum, yum, yum. So, it so the main thing is crickets? Like, did she get all kinds of insects oh, and yeah. small mammals too. So really? she would eat like baby mice. rats and rat mice. Yeah. Wow, no mm -hmm. kidding. Yeah. Amazing. Yes, yeah, so she has a, a, a pretty quick. Um, how old is she? You know, we don't know how old she is. She started to slow down. Um, when she was younger, she was much quicker. I'd do a little tap on her back leg and she would, she would scurry around. Mm. Um, but I think she's she's getting pretty old. She's molted three times for us. Do you think she knows you? Um, I think they get comfortable with certain interactions, mm -hmm. certain types of interactions. So I don't think she knows me personally, um, but she knows that like this calm, flat human hand, like I can it's I can sit okay. on this perch and I'm not right. feeling threatened. Yeah. Right. Pretty There's awesome. something to me that looks much more, so, uh, and and I apologize for for putting my values on this, but much more advanced about a tarantula than a sea spider. Sort of an interesting conversation that biologists have sometimes. So you're sort of saying that sea spiders are more primitive, and and that's a way that people sort of apply a value judgment to it. Yep. And it's it's a funny thing, right? Because these really are, they're what are called basal arthropods. So it's something that looked, you know, that branched off very early mm -hmm. from from chelicerates, from arthropods. And so it is basal in that sense, but it's been evolving for just as long as the lineage that's led to this it thing. It just didn't yep. need to. You know. I mean, this is what it came up so, with. Or that yeah. was the best, yeah. the yeah. best for that. So. But yeah, these so these guys are related to scorpions too. And they think that scorpions were like the the originals and then and then spiders oh. formed from that. Hmm. Um, but they both have those specialized mouth parts and and right. the, so the same body structure. Yeah. 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 That 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 abdomen is so big. It yeah. like wiggles around. It a does. Bit. It's very heavy. And that's another reason. <laughs> it's like jelly. <laughs> and that's another reason these guys they, they don't go up into the, the trees very much is because yeah, they are very heavy. They're um, heavy and also and like fragile. That looks like a big hunk of food if I'm an animal. <laughs> like it's not like this, it's so like, oh, males, a bunch of chitin. No, yeah, that's like a big Yeah, and the males like are gonna be small. There. They're gonna be more like a, a finger width. Yeah. Um and uh if she was out there, you know, not just spoiled, she might be a little bit thinner. Um, but she she's very well fed. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but take a take a look at this, and you can see how they molt. You can actually see the, how the abdomen is just oh, it's just very all. very fragile. So they take all their guts with them, and you can see that right, that's like the exoskeleton and their little spinnerets sitting dried there. Up there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they they flip this on their back. Does not have detectable mass. 
it yes. feels like nothing. Yeah. I did yeah. not expect that. That's sure. yeah. crazy light. Yeah. This molting process is interesting mm -hmm. because um, you see how this one has all the bryozoans yeah. on it. We think that those things growing on the surface, my, my student Steve Lane has been working on this, that, that those communities of organisms on the surface interfere with gas exchange oh. and that they may have to molt to get rid of that yeah. stuff. Yeah, interesting. That is the, um, but how do these guys start life? Do they like have to molt to grow bigger? They do. Yeah, like all arthropods, they do. And, but that but, might but be molting the... is kind of mysterious in this group because almost nobody's looked at it. We only saw a couple of individuals molt the whole time we were there. Okay. It's not totally clear that the when they get to a, adulthood, whatever that is, that they that they keep molting. So mm. they may, mm. may, Interesting. may be done at some point. But maybe they only yeah. have to because of that interference. Interesting. Yeah. It's a very vulnerable process for mm -hmm. tarantulas to, to molt. Um, they're going to flip on their back. And yeah, then and the inside the skin has to be really soft. Or it has when to be they, very when they soft. It has to be the perfect yeah. humidity. Um, yeah, and if there's a little bit of stress, they're they're mm. going to get stuck in their molt and they're going to die. Right. Mm. And, uh, Did you see her come out of these? Or was it... I got to see mm. her on her back. It was for this one. Yeah, I got to see mm. her on her back and I'm like, Oh no, she's died, and that, yeah, that's like my first reaction. Was like, oh no, she's she's dead. She's laying there upside down. But spiders don't die on their back. They, uh -huh. they, they mm -hmm. so like immediately, I'm like rational Realized. mind, like okay, yeah. no, what's going on? And then I I wait. I tried to wait. It happened overnight, and so I was like, I kept checking on her, and yeah. then yeah. eventually, like I slept for a couple hours, and then. I woke up and there was two of them. Uh -huh. <laughs> so many legs. <laughs> so many. <laughs> um, but no, yeah, and then they're pretty neat. vulnerable for the next day or two while they harden up, and uh, then the, they become like oxidized. So like the oxygen hardens mm. up their exoskeleton, and they can start moving around again. But they really don't want to move around because if they do, like, have to run from a predator or somehow they get in a weird position and their leg moves mm -hmm. weird, they'll actually harden in a weird position. Right. And then yeah. they're handicapped for that whole next year, basically. Right. We have insects in the lab that sometimes sure. have a hard time getting out of their molts, and, and it can kill them. Uh, yep. You know, like, they, they have to pull out their old tracheal tubes, oh, wow. and those tracheal tubes can break off inside of the new ones, uh -huh. and then that that stops up the oxygen from getting into their tissues, and it's really, and really it, bad for them. Kills so, them, yeah. 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 This does not have no mass. She's heavier. <laughs> Detectable yeah, mass. Yes, she is. <laughs> yeah, she's still pretty not, light. Maybe not as heavy as one would expect. Yeah. What a big cool animal. Isn't she neat? Yeah. So I don't I don't know if I told you what she was. She was a Chilean rose air tarantula. And oh, yeah. it's not no, she's a Chilean rose tarantula. Okay. Um and they used to be called Chilean rose hair tarantulas, but they moved away from the word hair because it was no hair. And it was confusing people. And so mm -hmm. Chilean rose tarantula, she's a female, and so this is as, as big as they get, and the males are smaller, and they, they're called rose tarantulas because they have a pink carapace right there. Mm. That top of the cephalothorax there. Yeah. It's beautiful. Uh, yeah. Well, thank you, Fluffy, for coming on the show. Uh and and you know. Hopefully you weren't freaked out by these many more-legged animals. <laughs> uh, Jesse runs uh, Animal Sanctuary and Rescue and has a YouTube channel where you talk about all the cool stuff that you do at youtube.com slash animalwondersmontana. And where can we find Big Biology? Bigbiology.org. Awesome. And uh, nice. it's on um, iTunes and Google Play. So Sweet. please sign up. This was fascinating. Thank you so much for coming out. And for going to Antarctica and diving into the freezing cold water to learn about pleasure. gigantic sea spiders. Yeah, thanks there. for having me on. Yeah. Appreciate it. All right, thank you for watching. Thanks for uh, supporting and enjoying SciShow.